to get back into the swing of things like fucking normal. So, time to... I know I'm going to destroy hamstrings. I can say that with absolute certainty. But this is sort of a reintroductory workout for quads. Because I smacked the heck out of my left knee when I you know, had a little whoopsie-daisy on my bike a little bit ago. And uh, not a motorbike. No, not a fucking motorcycle. I'm talking like a, well, electric motorbike. A little, uh, yeah, like an electric bike for school. I tell you something. If you have a walk to class and it's more than like 15 minutes, if you can swing it, getting an electric something is so nice. Oh my goodness. It's like, oh, five minutes to class? All right, let's go. And then I'm right there. So a little words of the wise. If you're still in college somewhere, or fuck, man. Even if your job is pretty close to where you live. <coughs> At least if the weather's nice. I'm sure it'll... I'm sure eventually it'll kind of become cost-effective. Like, you won't be paying for gas going back and forth. But then you are paying for electricity, and it's, you gotta do the math, you know, look at that for your own situation and see if it's a good move. But, uh, yeah, so enough of that. So, hamstrings is gonna be good. I know I'm gonna be able to go hard, really load them up, pump them to shit. But quads may be a little bit more lax. Like, I'm definitely not gonna do any really heavy squatting. I'm sure it'll be a bit on the lighter side. So, probably leg extensions, some sissy squat, supersets. So, you know, do a set of leg extensions and then jump straight into sissy squats right away with, you know, make use of the pre-exhaustion of my quads. So even though it won't be like the most obliterating lift, quads are still gonna get pumped up for sure. And then, that's pretty much it. So I was just sort of thinking, uh, what makes a good workout? So what do I feel or see or do where at the end of my workout, I'm checking my pump, like, what are the criteria that let me say, okay, this was a really good workout. I think this is an effective workout. I'm going to get gains from this. Versus, oh, that was a really shit workout. Fuck. That's not going to do anything for me. So, primary factor. Like, the main fucking difference that you're going to notice by the time you're done with a good workout. Is you should be fucking pumped. You know? Now, I'm not going to say that's the end-all, be-all, like, box that you have to check. To say I had a good workout or not because you can get a pump doing like scrappy sets you know? if I wanted to just get a chest pump I could sit on the um, like two cables and just pump out like pretty lightweight just flies you know decline right in front of the body maybe even kind of incline just hit my whole chest and after maybe 20 minutes of that like pretty high frequency sets, you know, like maybe 10, 20 reps, set them down for a minute, like not really doing any damage, but just sitting there pumping out reps, set after set after set, I can get a pretty good chest pump, so that's not really a crazy effective workout in my mind. So in that sense, getting pumped, it's not it, there's more to it. Um, I think you have to have some pretty difficult and high intensity sets to go along with adding to that, you know, pumpedness. Because if I just sit here and do lightweight to get a pump, I don't think that's it. I think I'm missing out on the stimulatory benefits of getting a ton of tension. You know, there's a lot of different ways to build muscle, right? We've seen dudes, like uh, if you're a Phil Heath fan, he loves lightweight, controlled reps, very methodical, really focusing at the squeeze, you know, perfect technique, maximum mind-muscle connection, that sort of stuff. And look at him, he's fucking huge. Now, of course, that's kind of... That's not really the best example for the general population. There's some other shit going on, which we all know about. But that's sort of style, right? And then we've got a... Uh, oh, this guy was freaking crazy to see. Hollingstead. Um, Hollings... I may be saying that wrong. Look it up. should be James Hollingstead. Holy shit. <laughs> not only is he w fucking way bigger than me, too... But in terms of weight, oh my god. You just have to check out his Instagram and his training videos. 
And I got to see him today at a, or not today, but this weekend at the expo too. Insane. But seriously heavyweight, low-ish rep sets, you know, closer to 8 to 12, but really maximizing mechanical tension. And of course, fucking freak too. And I think, you know, in terms of what you should kind of aim for in your workouts, you know, progressive overload, mechanical tension, that's definitely fucking up there. You're not going to get massive arms just sitting around curling the 20s for, you know, a really controlled set of 15, like really holding it slow. Like you're going to get way more out of curling as much as you can. It's reasonable form for 10 to 12, even with a little bit of swinging, because you're going to put way more tension on your biceps. That's half the reason why I like doing dumbbell curls in the beginning of my arm days, is because it's the lifts for biceps which I can load the most weight with and do it the safest, at least based on kind of how it feels. Like if my first set for biceps was like preacher curls, I would not want to try to do as much weight as I can and like do like a set of eight because that's just not a movement which is really meant for that kind of insane loading. So I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent here, but it's almost like doing a dumbbell curl it's almost like the compound lift in my mind for biceps where I can really load up a lot of weight and then once I do a few good sets there I can move on to more you know isolation squeezing movements like single arm preacher curls easy bar preachers cable curls uh, concentration machine curls you know all sorts of other stuff where nothing else is really kind of coming to play right I'm not using my body to swing anything it's pretty much all biceps but if I had to sort of you know, make a pitch on my basic style of training, which I, I do stand behind, would be heavier sets towards the beginning of the workout, followed by maybe lighter squeezing, burning sets toward the end. You know, like if I were totally fresh, knee, limb-wise, everything for quads today, then quads would look way different. I'm still going to start on leg extensions, because that's what I like to... You know, get my knees, all sorts of my tendon area warmed up. And also I feel better pressing with a little bit of a quad pump, which two or three sets of leg extensions will give me. But quads would start off with really heavy leg extensions, heavy squats. This gym has a really good um, leg press that I like, like single leg loaded. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to really load up my knees today. But I do like it. You know, Usually I'd want to start with some heavy pressing. And then come back to leg extensions for light squeezing sets. And maybe not even squeezing, but just lighter, you know, kind of, I really kind of want to say pump work. Because after you finish some hard sets and you really, I mean, I don't want to say you've done like muscular damage. Because it's not like just tearing down your muscle tissue is, I mean, when we talk about the real fine details of how a set is going to make you grow. This is not an exact fucking science. Not yet, at least. You know, give it a few more years of um, Jeff Nippard, Mike Isertal, Renaissance periodization. And if they can give me a real perfect ass, you know, summarized detail of the exact whatever, and that's like the certified most effective sets, guess what, man? I'm going to do it. Because I'm like, I want to I grow as much as possible, obviously. Uh, but, you know, to an extent, it's, we're not baking here. It's not an exact science. This is more like cooking. It's very emotional and passionate. You know, if you can really put your heart into what you're doing, do a hard-ass set of leg extension, and curls, or whatever, it's going to end up working. Uh, oh, so, but heavy sets with some squeezing sets, too. And you can go back and forth, you know. Sometimes I do all squeezing sets if, um... Maybe if I'm feeling a little tender in my joints or something, I might do a lighter day. Still do hard sets, but just with less weight. And if I'm feeling strong, I'm going to make use of that and really load up whatever I'm hitting. Uh, but as long as you do some hard-ass sets, and you know it, I don't mean like you put on a, a, you know, a, a really grungy face and you like pretend that you did a hard set to failure just so that you, know, you fit in with the dudes around you. I mean, you seriously pushed yourself to the point where you can rack the weight and say, oh, shit, 
That was a good one. I was getting real fired up for that. If you can do your sets like that for your workout and then finish with a pump, that's it. You know, when people ask me, like, uh, or not even me, but just anybody, when the discussion arises, like, oh, what's the best chest workout? What's the best chest exercise? It's like there's no answer. That's not a question that has an answer. You know, it's almost flawed in a sense. Like, what's the best chest exercise for what? You know, for for heavy pressing, for flies? Uh, even then, that's going to depend on your own build. Like, if you've got a certain, like, wide clavicles or shorter uh, fucking humerus or something, your forearms are extra long, and it's, it's going to be different for you. So, with a lot of this shit, and I know this is a stupid question, or a stupid answer, because you're like, oh, what's the best way to go about it? Uh, I mean, really, I kind of, I want to say, like, fuck, man, you got to figure it out for yourself. Now, a lot of the basic building blocks and you know, fundamental work has already been done. Right? There's some pretty solid rules that you can follow, which will point you in the right direction. Right? Hit every body part twice a week. Take rest days when necessary. Right? Protein intake, calories, whatever, cardio on a consistent basis. That one's still a little tricky for folks. Oh, that's about a sneeze. But the basic gist is it's tried and true. You know, you lift heavy weights, you're gonna grow. So really what you should be focusing on is just your own fucking intensity. Which I know is it's like a silly answer. You know, it's like what's um oh, how do I how am I gonna have a good workout? It's like it's almost like I'm saying, well, you just have to have a good workout. But you know, I'm not you. you know, you're your own. You're your own dude. You're the hero of your story. You gotta figure this shit out, man. Uh, if you love easy bar curls, fucking spam them. Go hard. Play some, you know, some uh, some DMX. Get hyped off your ass and fucking throw that shit around and start screaming. You know, whatever you've got to do. Working out, it's um. I like the simplicity. Because a lot of different things or like endeavors or whatever, it's very like skill based, very methodical. Like you have to constantly be learning and adapting. Uh, like if you're trying to become like a high level athlete, uh, it's you know it's kind of different. So I like the simplicity of lifting weights because once you get the gist of your training style and like you know you have pretty solid form, then all you have to do is go in and fucking just push yourself. You, know, you don't necessarily have to get too mental with it. You just pick up some dumbbells, curl them as hard as you fucking can with reasonable form, and you're just going to fucking grow as long as you couple that hard-ass workout with a substantial amount of calories so you've got the energy to, you know, funnel some contractile tissue onto your biceps. But we're pulling into the gym now. Main idea, which... I can say this shit all the time. Just go hard. Go hard, get big, and have fun doing it. I uh, I would not mind wearing a t-shirt that said that on the back. I could wear that with uh, I could wear that with pride. But let's get started. Looks uh, doesn't look too packed either. Whoop. All right, I've got a habit in this gym specifically of starting with uh seated hamstring curls so in the spirit of just changing shit up i think i'll start with laying curls i've used a lot of laying hamstring curls before and i never see this one but this one's fucking awesome i had no idea this gym's like right around where i live too and i've never had a membership since like the last year i've been missing out on hamstring gains but i'm thinking a few heavy sets here and then maybe laying or no maybe seated but honestly, if I do two sets and I feel like I want to do another four, I could just do all six here, and I'd be fine with it. I know this is an oversimplified understanding, but I kind of like that. Like, when I say this, I know it's not 100% true, but I think if you can look at things just for its most important key components, then it can kind of simplify your approach to a lot of problems. So I guess in a way, the problem I'm facing now is I want bigger hamstrings. So I want to stimulate my hamstrings, and I know that the primary movement that they're responsible for, and I know they help in hip hinging too, 
I do like RDLs, and I should do a little more of them. Not today, though. I kind of want to spam our uh, hamstring curls. But I know that hamstrings, their primary fucking, you know, movement, going from here to here. Like, even just doing that, I can fucking flex the shit out of them. So since I know that, like, if I do five or six sets of just straight-up hamstring curls, finish with a complete hamstring pump, and they're destroyed to the point where I'm, like, fucking kind of hobbling around because I can't straighten my knees all the way, I love it, you know? So don't get too caught up in like, oh, I, I want to stimulate the, the inner, I don't, I don't know the different like cuts in the hamstring names. I want to stimulate my inner hamstring. Ah. Fuck man, just hit your hamstring hard. And then hard being like the most important word of that, that, uh, that sentence. But let's, uh, let's hit the ship. <clears throat> Let's just fucking run that back a few more times. Yeah, let's just run this back right here for the whole portion of hamstrings. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Whew. So, for whatever reason, and I can actually explain it, I like heavy weight sets. And maybe it's because I'm a little bit of a baby. Because with a heavy weight set, I only have to sit here for like 15 seconds to hit legit fucking failure. If I were to sit here with like half the weight or even a third the weight and do slow controlled reps, really hold it and burn, that'd be a little bit harder. I do like those, but I'm gonna stick with a few more heavy sets, at least for today. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Oh my god. Yeah, a few more. more huh. I never tried doing that I can I can give myself a little assistance I'm gonna do that for the next few I think I got to drop the weight. Oh. Uh, probably just... Actually, let's drop it even further. I think this set will do um, some alternating reps. Like five reps on the right leg, five on the left, back and forth. 
This might be the last one next, but I might do two more. I, I feel really good, so that may be making me want to do a little extra volume. Come on. This is the last set. Oh my god. Fuck. Hamstrings are done. Oh. Let's go camp out of the leg extension. So since my quads are fresh, if I sat here and just started busting out reps, I could probably sit here for like fucking 30. So I'm gonna make this a two portion set. So it'll almost feel like a pre-exhausting portion followed by burnout reps. So the first like, I couldn't even tell you how many, maybe 10, maybe more, maybe less reps when I'm fresh. I'm gonna try to hold it at the top for a bottom or <laughs> hold it at the top for a moment, come back down, hold it, come back down, be a little bit methodical with it, really try to fucking flex. And once I can't really hold that at the top, I'm gonna switch my style. And instead of doing slow controlled reps, I'm gonna start fucking burning them out. I wouldn't recommend this for every fucking body part, but with leg extensions, I do like kind of some nasty, like, I don't wanna say bouncy, cause I'm not just bouncing it. Like the weight isn't like flying up in the air and then I'm catching it at the bottom. But these quick reps, I'm not sure about muscle stimulation, but I can say for sure they tire my ass out quad wise and pump them up pretty well. And that's pretty much what I'm aiming for, right? Like I was saying to the car. So now I just need to pick a badass song and get started. This is my first set of quads in like two weeks. I feel kind of funky. Not funky, but like, like not bad, just kind of, I don't know, whatever. I'm not gonna do another set like that. Let's just do some heavy single leg. And this will probably be right here, the majority of quads. So get comfortable with this area. Not going to work soon. Yeah, that, um, that first set was pretty much just a warm up. My quads weren't really firing all the way. So this is the first real working set. If you, uh, so, I mean, perfect fucking example. All my sets aren't fucking badass. Especially sometimes, well, typically it's the first set. My first set of a body part, usually, honestly, really only quads. Maybe just because it's such a big muscle, but sometimes, I won't be like properly warmed up. And when I do that first working set, I'm not really, like I can tell I'm not really hitting it. I don't know, something just kind of feels off a little bit. So if you have a shit set, there's no problem with that, but definitely don't count it. Say that was fucked, come back harder. Here we go, set number one. And uh, I'm gonna switch to heavy single leg this time. Ugh. 
Uh, yeah, let's keep going. All right, let's be a bit more methodical with these reps. So instead of you know, just heavy as possible, single leg, I'm gonna go a bit lighter. And then five reps on the right side, five on the left. And I'm gonna do, while I'm fresh, sort of half reps, but not really, you know, like pause reps, more like halfway up, hold for just a moment, like just a split second, like just stop the movement of the weight and then finish the rep each side, which you can do this. Honestly, I usually only do this for biceps and quads. I should probably try doing this with everything because it almost turns the movement into a two-stage flex. Because if you sit here and do a leg extension, you can kind of ride the momentum upward. Once you get the weight moving, you just get to ride it up to the top. But if you pause it for a second, then you have to really send some extra fucking signals to contract to finish the top of the rep. If you got a bad uh, mind muscle connection, you can't really like mentally pull the weight up with your quads. Like it feels like you're just pushing it with your shin. Some of this stuff might help, especially for bicep curls. I really like doing these towards the end. Lighter dumbbells, halfway up, hold it, and then finish. I've done this on pec flies too. Feels pretty cool, but for leg extensions and quads, leg extensions, biceps, hamstrings too a little bit, it just kind of feels right. First of 60 squats. Okay. I think just one or two more. I don't want to do, I don't want to go too crazy on quads. I can already tell, like, maybe feel a little more tender than normal. But even after just a few sets, I already feel pretty fucking pumped. All right, a few more. Just double leg leg extensions. Right into sissy squats. Yeah. <sighs> 
One more. Make one more, and then we check the fucking pop. Blake and Dad. Let's go post down quick and get home. It's late. It's like 10 o'clock. Okay. Let's see just how legs are fucking looking. Oof. Even though I'm wearing a Pro's Gym shirt. <clears throat> we didn't actually go to Pro's Gym this weekend. We only went to American Barbell. Uh, Pro's is going to be way too fucking packed. Which would have been cool. Because everybody was fucking... You know, floating around there, big and small names, but you know we gotta fucking work out. So a gym a little bit further out of the way was a little bit better for our our training situation. Oh goodness! So hamstrings was fucking out of the park. Quads left a little bit to be desired today. Not that I'm too surprised. I was kind of holding back a little bit. Maybe not like the sets intensity themselves. But like, you know, kind of just the workout style overall. But still, pretty decent fucking pump if I say so myself. Oh my goodness. Fucking hell. Let's see, are there any, uh, any hamstring cuts in there? There's a mirror to my left. Yeah, man, fuck. Even just standing here, straightening my legs all the way out. Oh, that's a pretty solid amount of thickness. Now, of course, I wouldn't mind if my, uh, you know, if my legs were twice as thick. That'd be pretty fucking cool. But what are you gonna do? Is this, uh, is this how we do this one? Oh, oh, I was, uh, I was getting a little bit jealous in the training videos, which are on the hostile channel. I was lifting with. Nick and Jacob, oh, and they're both in prep, so they're fucking diced. So even though size-wise, we're not incomparable, they, they're definitely a bit ahead of the game. They've been doing it for longer, but I'm fully bulked up, so I don't have as many cool cuts and everything else. So it's like we're both hitting a side side chest, and even if I've got some body part that might be a little ahead of the game size-wise, dude. It's, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but when you get leaner, even though you are probably getting a little bit smaller, because like, you gotta think, the body fat that's in between my muscle and my skin, it is making me like physically bigger. I've got a little bit of extra like thickness on the outside of me, but the look of having all these fucking cuts and veins and striations, dude, it adds fucking 20 pounds of, uh, of lean muscle at least to the, to the fucking eye. So that's making me excited to cut down, which I think is something a lot of people get. You know, it's like you're hyped up to get lean and show off what you got underneath. But you gotta remember, you have to build up that fucking underneath frame so that when you do cut down, you have something to show off, you know? Like, it's, uh, you kinda have to be satisfied with training, knowing that you're gonna get to enjoy it I mean, obviously you should be enjoying your training regardless, but you should get to enjoy that sort of physical, like visual aspect of being just fucking freaky as hell. 
later on. You know? And the fact that that's always kind of something you can work on and improve and look forward to. I don't think about that as like, oh, dude, I'm not as fucking cut as these guys. Fuck, I look like shit. You know, when I see so many fucking dice next to me, especially if like we're in a similar weight category, you know, me and them are both in the kind of mid 200 range. They, uh, they've bulked up a bit heavier than me. Like they're telling me in their uh, fully bulked states, they're like 270, 270s. I've never got up that high. So seeing somebody dice like that, it just gets me excited to get fucking bigger. So that when I do end up cutting down, I know it's gonna look that much crazier. But that's all I got here. I gotta go home and fucking eat. I'm starving. I, I'll include a weight update in the morning. Oh, I'm definitely not gonna be 260. At least I don't think so. So even if I'm like 250, uh, you know, like 250 something, give it a few more days. Just from eating good food and having my full day to actually eat, I'll get back to that low 260 number in no time. So I know I've kind of fucking deprived you. Full day of eating will happen soon-ish. I can say that with certainty. Soon-ish. But let's, uh, let's get in the car and roll. There we go. Legs felt fucking good. <clears throat> Hamstrings especially. Uh, this was definitely a hamstring. Not intentionally, but just, you know, by nature of the situation. Ended up being a hamstring-focused leg day. And uh, this is something I think about. For the most part, I don't love the idea of, like, doing a quad bias leg day and then doing, like, a hamstring bias leg day. Because in my mind, it's like I want to give every muscle equal attention. But I can say for sure I have a much easier time with hamstrings because I'm hitting hamstrings first. And I'm not pre-exhausted with anything. You know, I can just jump straight into it. So by the time I get to quads... Even though my quads aren't tired out specifically, I have just done like six or seven pretty hard sets. And your hamstrings, even though definitely secondary to your quads, they're still a pretty fucking big muscle. And they definitely take some energy out of me to the point where it makes me think that my quad workout is a little bit, uh, let's just say compromised by the fact that I'm a little tired out from hamstrings. And for me, you gotta remember this as well. When you're bulked up, uh, just from my fat distribution, compared to everything else, my legs don't get any extra, like, width. Because like, when, I'm, when I bulk up, I've got a good amount of fat in like my uh, like sides, lower back. It's pretty evenly distributed for me, but I get a lot of sides and lower back. So if you're looking at me from the front, my waist is a little bit wider. So when I'm bulked up, just by, you know, angles or whatever, my legs do look a bit smaller. So when I cut down, you know, proportionally, they kind of maintain their size while everything else falls into place. But I think my quads need more work than my hamstrings. Even though my hamstrings aren't like jumping out at you like crazy, they're pretty fucking developed. And I'd say, I mean, every muscle is gonna look crazy when you cut down. But hamstrings especially, they sort of like blow up when you, you know, diet down and you peel off some of that extra body fat you got on you because you have a lot of fucking body fat on your, um, well, maybe not you, but for me, I've got a good chunk on my butt too. So when you're looking at me from the side, if I'm doing like a side chest and I'm trying to like pop my hamstring out, you know, my butt is just extra big because it's got some fat on it. You know, when I cut down, it shrinks a few sizes, and my hamstrings just look even bigger. You know, when people do, uh, like when you see actual bodybuilders, and they're doing a side chest or whatever, and they're really fucking lean, their hamstrings look fucking huge. Also, they're kind of smushing the hamstrings up against their other leg, but that's its own thing. And uh, my camera's battery is near dead, so if this cuts out in the middle of something, fuck. So tomorrow's gonna be a chest day. So I'll be there for that. I'm just kind of prepping if this thing fucking dies mid-recording. Uh, but yeah, so I think I might want to chill out on hamstrings a little bit just so I can give my quads more attention. 
I'm still going to hit hamstrings hard, of course, but I think it might be in my best interest for my build, at least, to really thrash quads and then maybe save hamstrings for later. I don't usually love that approach because, for me, hamstrings first, quads just feel better. Like, after I get a hamstring pump, heavy pressing feels better, squats and leg press. Uh, honestly, leg extensions feel kind of good. I just got more blood in the area, like the back of my knee. A little bit of extra, you know, cushion in that whole fucking, you know, knee joint. So hamstrings first does make my quad days feel better. But I think I might just have to do a bit of hamstrings, then do quads, and maybe come back to hamstrings at the end, just to finish off some more, you know, some more of its workload. So that when I do quads, I'm not already out of breath. I like doing all the hamstrings first, so when I actually start doing quads, I can give them my full attention and I don't have to have like my subconscious telling me, okay, you still have hamstrings later, save a little bit of energy for yourself. Like finishing with quads, it kind of lets me try to go all out at least as much as I can, knowing that, you know, my last set of leg extensions and super, like super set it with sissy squats or whatever I end up doing is the last set of the lift and I can really push it. But yeah, I think for me, quads need a bit more attention. So I may kind of fluctuate my uh, my distribution of workload, or maybe just my exercise order, and do more quad stuff first and finish with hamstrings. So that's kind of something you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. You know, it's just fucking whatever. But good lift, good pump. I'm ready to fill back up with carbs and get this bulk back on track. So totally different anecdote. What gets you fucking hyped up? What gets you going? Is it when uh, is it when everybody's cheering for you and you got a whole crew of uh, of your buddies watching you do your sets and kind of yelling at you like, come on, like uh, like when Larry Wheels is doing curls with a chain around his neck, and, and uh, you know, he's got his fucking hype man screaming at him, or you know, are you more kind of a stoic sort of samurai style lifter? You want it totally quiet, and just get your shit done yourself the um, whatever floats your boat but I think the guys who are really on it and the dudes who can really you know, make satisfactory gains over a long term uh, for one thing it's not the guy okay I actually had a second battery saved it um, so yeah the guys who can really fucking push it long term legit gains you know like dudes who you ask them how long they've been lifting they're, they're gonna tell you like fucking Oh, I've been doing this for 12 years. Like, dudes like that. I was about to say, it's not the guys with the best genetics or who can do the hardest sets. It's the guys who can just maintain a fucking steady mind, you know, stay in one track and just ride it smoothly. And dudes like that, or girls too, not disparaging, and it's, it's the people who can kind of, you know, have an iron mind. You know, it's the guys who don't let anything really fuck with them. Because... It's not like I'm saying, like, don't, like, oh, don't feel emotion, don't be deterred by any kind of negative things around you. But if you're so easily susceptible to, like, just negativity that it really just fucks up your day, or, like, if, um, uh, if somebody said something mean to you, or, like, you're getting in beef with your, with your buddies or whoever else, or, like, I mean, just something about your life is kind of fucking rubbing you the wrong way. If you're so easily deterred from your, you know, from your routine, that that sort of stuff, you just really let it seep into you. You're constantly thinking about it. It's fucking messing up your mindset. You're, uh, you can't get good lifts. You don't even want to go to the gym because, like, for whatever reason, no matter, like, something's going on, it makes you just feel like shit. <sighs> Fuck, man. I don't want to say, like, oh, you got to suck it up because that's, I mean, it's just a mean thing to say. But you know, to an extent, you kind of kind of do, you know? Like, if you can understand, like, some people are just fucking mean or whatever, then if you actually can kind of comprehend that in your mind, then, what, are you surprised? Like, are you surprised that there's, like, assholes in the world? Like, whatever. You know, you just kind of accept it. You kind of uh, have to accept things how they are. And don't let them, like, seep into your own system, right? You've got a fucking temple. That's you. That's your mind. That's your subconscious. That's everything. And... The more chill you can be in there, right, and the less you can let anything seep into you, 
or like a, you know, let's say you're real fucking ambitious. Early on lifter, you're talking about like, oh, you know, one day I want to be, I want to be on stage with fucking Chris Bumstead, you know, or I want to, I want to be able to do a pose down next to so and so and really be able to hold my own, uh, or it could be whatever. If I'm talk like, I say this every time. A lot of this kind of motivational or whatever, like, you know, one track mindedness sort of uh, like tips or whatever I'm saying. I mean it to apply to everything, like no matter what you're doing. But of course, if I'm talking about something, I'm going to loop it back around to weightlifting, you know, muscle growth and bodybuilding. But if that's your shit, you know, you've got a real fucking big ass ambition. And like even thinking about it just gets you excited. Let's say you tell somebody and they're like, oh, that's fucking stupid. You're never going to be able to do that. Or um, oh, sometimes I think about this before. I remember early on, I was like, uh, I was telling somebody, I'm like going on about like lifting or something, or I was like saying, oh, I got to go to the gym. And somebody was like, oh, come on, you're not a real bodybuilder. And at the time, I was like, you know, 180 pound lifter, right? But that sort of stuff, sometimes I do think about that and it kind of gets me riled up. Uh, but that's, that's a point that I'm going to talk about in a second. But like, I remember, man, there's a lot of fucking negativity out in the world. And if, you, uh, if you're surprised by that, if you, and you can kind of let that stuff into you, you're setting yourself up for fucking failure. You know, like I was about to say, you've got your temple in your mind, right? That's where you should be nice and zen, very smooth, very go with the flow in a sense. You know, be able to do your shit without um, being deterred by whatever's going on around you. And the more that you can let just shit in, like thinking about trying to impress people or like trying to please somebody or do something because somebody says so or you want to, you know, you want to fit someone else's like mold of what's good or bad. Fuck man, come on. You know? You're the captain of your own ship. And if you can steer it to wherever you truly want to go in your own fucking mind, rather than you know, where other people are trying to like you know force you into or whatever, and you can really live your own life how you want to do it, you're gonna have so much more fucking fun. And not even fun, but just it's more chill, you know? Uh, this is getting into a little bit more so just talk about day-to-day -day life but how much time do you spend like worrying or contemplating or like listening and gossiping it's just shit that doesn't even really fucking matter you know, people can toil away for years upon years about shit which like for them in their mind they consider like extremely important but really it's just fucking stupid bullshit you know like, I see this a lot just looking out in the world and I see people getting real fucking upset about anything. You know, insert anything that people are getting upset about. And, you know, more than <laughs> nine times out of ten, or probably more than that, I don't think, oh my God, they, hey, they have a noble cause that they're getting riled up about. Good for them. <laughs> nine times out of ten, I see people freaking out about some random shit. And I'm like, wow, you really just have nothing better to do. You know? So the more that you kind of focus on just random fucking stupid nothingness, it's going to reflect in, you know, how you are as a person. So for the most part, I just couldn't be fucked, you know? With all sorts of randomness out and everywhere, arguments, fucking you know, people, debates, ah, gives a shit, man. Right? Wake up, have a nice breakfast, do your shit, watch some TV shows, whatever. Have a badass lift, eat some more food, and go to bed. That's awesome. Why do I want to deal with any other stupid whatever? Uh, fuck, what was I about to say? There's more. There's more to this. I just need a moment to think about it. I think that was about it. So, main idea. Honestly, you just kind of have to. The more you can kind of really internally exemplify the lifestyle of like you know I don't care like I care about my stuff I care about the people around me what I care about and everything else is just kind of noise in the background the more you can do that the better because you've only got so much well for one thing we've only got so much time in the day but on a more maybe kind of uh, not spiritual but kind of like mental capacity you've only got you've only got so much energy man like you've only got so much, so many things that you can focus on. 
So if you're in like fucking group chats and you're constantly like, I think this is just an absolute leech on your fucking mental, uh, mental energy. Just like, oh, did you hear what she said about him? Oh, my, what did he do? Oh, my. This is your fucking energy bar right here. Down to zilch. Oh, come on. Stupid. It's, uh, that's some, like, elementary playground shit. Right? So, in that sense, I think you've only got a few things you can really lock in and put your mind into and your... I don't want to say soul behind. I'm not that spiritual. But, like, you know, really get into. And if you can kind of narrow that down to just a few things, then I think those few things you're going to get more out of. And if you're constantly spreading yourself thin, thinking about this and that and whatever, all sorts of just nothingness that doesn't even matter, then it's going to show. It's going to freaking show. So I think that's all I got to say there. And what's crazy is like, we know this, like I know, and I, I'm not, I'm not talking like I'm a fucking perfect example. I waste so much fucking time, like just playing on my phone and just being like stupid. Uh, but you know, we all know when we're doing shit that's dumb. We all know when we're doing something, we're like, oh, it's I definitely am probably wasting my fucking time with this, right? So you kind of have to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a stronger fist when it comes to your mind, because you've got. Uh, I love hearing. I love like watching videos about this. Not all the time, but you know, every so often kind of like stoic sort of philosophy kind of videos and like that's not my shit all the time you know I'm watching brain rot like fucking TV shows and TikTok but in your mind you've almost got I mean we all know this you've got your conscious and your unconscious mind your subconscious so you know, whenever you're kind of thinking some like whenever thoughts kind of pop up in your mind spontaneously that's your subconscious Right. If you're, if you know you're going to the gym and you've got it scheduled, like oh I've got a leg day, whenever subconsciously in your mind the thought arises, like oh man, I should probably skip the gym today, just because your subconscious is like oh this is going to be difficult. I don't want to do it. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of effort. I'm very tired. You know, when you have a sort of thought like that, and I know I'm getting on it. I'm just going all sorts of different ways with this talk, but uh, whatever. Uh, when you're in this kind of, uh, let me get back to it. So when that sort of thought arises, like, oh, I should probably skip legs today. That's when your conscious mind has to listen to that thought and say, what the fuck is that? Get real. Come on. That's fucking stupid. You know, because you can't really control your subconscious thoughts. They're just going to pop up like, like whatever. It's just, it's subconscious. You can't control it. But the part of you that can't control what you do, you know, your active fucking mind you got to fucking tighten your leash. So even though you may think like, oh crap, I better skip legs today, I'm fucking tired. Man up, say, come on, it's fucking stupid, let's go. And that same thought process, I think if you apply that to everything else in your life, you're going to have a better time. You know, it's like, oh man, I should probably do this or so. And if consciously you know like, oh, this is, a, this is probably a bad fucking move, I probably shouldn't do this listen to it freaking listen to it so i think that's all i got we're getting on a going on some random ass tangents but whatever honestly that's where some of the gold lies these little uh these little off the cuff stream of consciousness chit chats if i do enough of them i know i'll end up saying something mad uh mad motivational and cool but a little uh conclusive statement I'm ready to get back into my normal routine of weights and food. My legs are fucking not burning, but I can tell they just all around feel kind of fucking tender. I haven't hit legs for like a week and a half. Um, well, I haven't really hit quads for like a week and a half. So I'm fucking sure that you know, I'm going to feel them tomorrow. I should probably do an Epsom salt bath. <laughs> That's one thing that kind of sucks about my school apartment is... Um, it's got two bathrooms, you know, me and my roommate, but just showers. I would love to do, like, salt baths on a consistent basis. 
And then when I diet down, sometimes I like doing ice baths. Uh, maybe not even because I'm like, oh, this is going to have some tangible, you know, physical benefits for me. But whenever I diet down, since I'm not constantly, you know, pushing a ton of food into my system, I almost feel like I want to make my days like a little bit more difficult just for its own fucking sake. Holy fuck, did you see that guy? Dude, it's going like one fucking ten. Oh. But oh yeah, so ice baths on occasion. Full day of eating. I know I've I know I've kept it from you. I'll get one pretty soon. Same thing with a grocery trip. Um I think I uh <laughs> I think I want to get a smaller camera. Like a little um I don't know if you know anything about photography, but like a little uh like a DJI, like a pocket three or something. Because <laughs> when I put the whole tripod set up with like this big ass fucking Sony lens and everything in the grocery cart and I'm pushing it around the store, it makes me so fucking embarrassed. It's like a whole uh <laughs> it's like a whole cinematography thing. Just let's just say this, it fucking draws eyes. So if I could set up just a teeny little camera right there on the cart, that would probably be a little bit more inconspicuous. So maybe if I get one of those, I'll do them a little more often. I know, um, I know it's a little bit, or not a little bit. I know it's very repetitive when it's just workout after workout after workout. But you gotta remember that's the fucking that's the meat and potatoes. That's what it actually. I mean, not what it takes, but. That's what's actually going to get you gains, you know. So, I mean, if you're <laughs> if you're watching these videos because you're waiting for me to do like a like an oiled up challenge or like a, like anything stupid like that, <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but you're sorely mistaken. Lifts after lifts, thousand more to come easily. So, that's all I got. I'll see you tomorrow for chest, which I am. I'm already excited for it. Oh my goodness. I am. The day that I almost trained chest on the weekend, we uh, there was just no time to train. So yeah, on, uh, I think it was Saturday. That was my first rest day for a while. But it definitely didn't feel like a rest day because I was so fucking tired after standing around all day. But back to normal routine. Let's pack some fucking muscle onto my frame. I will see you tomorrow for chest.